Hi guys, today we're going to talk about simplifying radical expressions. So I'm going to show you two different methods to show to simplify radical expressions. And then what I'll have you do is I'll have you kind of choose which method that you think might work better for you, which makes more sense to you. Um, and then in the next video, I'll have you actually watch me going through some of those examples because I'll, I'll videotape myself doing examples two separate ways. So let's look at what those two methods are. So it's when we simplify radicals, we're going to start with an expression similar to this, where we're going to have both a number and variables underneath a radical. And these are, so for one of the, the methods you can choose, these are the steps. First thing we'll do is we'll rewrite the numbers as a product of perfect squares and simplify those similar to what we've done before. Then we'll change all of our variables to exponential form. We'll change exponents to mixed numbers. And then we will make sure that the whole number part of those mixed numbers stays out of the radical while the fraction part is put back under the radical. So we'll look at this top example here so I can kind of show you what it looks like. So here's my problem. I'm simplifying the square root of 32 x to the fifth y to the fourth z cubed. Um, so the first thing I would do according to step two is I would change, uh, or excuse me, according to step one, is I would rewrite numbers as a product of perfect squares. So notice I've rewritten 32 as the square root of 16 and the square root of 2. I've also went ahead and done step two, where I've changed all my variables to exponential form. So instead of x to the fifth, I have x to the five halves. Instead of y to the fourth, I have y to the four halves. And instead of z cubed, I have z to the three halves. So the next thing you can see that I'm going to do is I want to change any of those exponents that are currently improper fractions to mixed numbers. So I went ahead and I said, I know the square root of 16, looking over here at my next step, was 4. No idea what the square root of 2 is, so I left it as square root of 2. I reduced 5 halves because I said, well, as a mixed number, 2 goes into 5 twice with a remainder of 1 half, giving me here x squared times x to the 1 half y to the 4 halves, well how can I reduce 4 halves? Well I can do that by saying that's just y squared. So notice there isn't a fractional part with that. And z to the 3 halves, sorry about that, z to the 3 halves, 2 goes into 3 once giving me z to the 1 with the remainder of 1 half giving me z to the 1 half. Now that I've done that, I'm going to keep anything that has a whole number part as a whole number without a radical and any part, any variable that has a fraction exponent, I'm going to put back under a radical. So for example, this x to the 1 half and this z to the 1 half. So notice the 4 dropped down, the square root of 2 stayed, x squared stayed x squared, x to the 1 half, that 1 half, that 2, tells me to use a square root, y squared dropped down, z to the 1 dropped down, and I just rewrote it as z, and z to the 1 half became the square root of z because again this denominator of 2 told me to use the square root. The last thing I want to do is I want to group together anything that is not under a radical out front and anything that is under a radical I want to put back under the same radical. This would therefore be my final answer 4x squared y squared z times the square root of 2xz. So this is the first method that you can choose to use. So again, just re-going through these steps, I can rewrite the number as a product of perfect squares like I did with the 32. I can change all my variables to exponential form like I also did here. I change my exponents to be mixed numbers. And the fraction parts that I have after changing my, uh, my exponents to mixed numbers go back under radicals. So now let's look at the second method that you can choose. The second method, we're still going to take that same first step and rewrite all of our numbers as a product of perfect squares. We'll still simplify those. We're going to rewrite or think about our variables as a product of perfect squares as well. We're going to start thinking about what can I take out or how many groups of, that, of my given index can I take out. So let's say, for example, I were asked to simplify the square root of 32 x to the fifth y to the fourth z cubed once again. First thing I am going to do is rewrite my numbers as a product of perfect squares, where I get the square root of 16 times the square root of 2. I also rewrote my variables as a product of perfect squares. So I took x to the fifth and rewrote it as the square root of x to the fourth, because I'm thinking in terms of if I have 5 
how many groups of two can I take out? Well, I can take groups of two out of x to the fourth and still have an x left over. I can take groups of two out of y to the fourth, so I put that under its own radical. If I look at z cubed, I can take groups of two out of z squared, but I need that additional z to make the z cubed. Doing that, my square root of 16 becomes four, my square root of two becomes two. Well, x to the fourth, well, how many groups of two, since my index on a square root is two, how many groups of two are in x to the fourth? There are two groups of two, which is where I get x squared. The square root of x stays under the radical because I can't make any groups out of one x. Y to the fourth, I can make two groups of y, two groups of two, which gives me y squared, with no other y's left over. Z squared, I make one group of two, which is where the z comes from, and the square root of z stays under the radical because I cannot make any groups of two from that. I still want to collect anything that is not under the radical and put it out front, and anything that is under the radical, I will put all under the same radical. So notice I do get the same answer regardless of which method I choose. So try and determine which method sounded like something that you could understand better if you're not sure yet. Um, just watch some of both of the next videos. But on the next two videos, one of them is going to go over solving or simplifying square roots by changing my exponents to fractions or to rational numbers. And the other one's going to talk about how you can solve or simplify square roots by pulling out groupings. So that will be what the next video is on.